what's missing? <laughs> Union Station, right? Lucky us, it's still there because it was almost torn down on more than one occasion. What would our city and our skyline be without Union Station? But what's this building? Old City Hall in River Market. Uh, fire destroyed it, uh, even though that's a fire station right next to it. Uh, <laughs> And we, we replaced it with a 29-story Pendergast concrete structure. Uh, this building? Yeah, this building? Uh, what are these buildings? These are all buildings that were demolished in Kansas City. Many of them were destroyed and turned into parking lots or parking garages. Uh, some of them would be nationally recognized if they still stood today. But more importantly, all of them could have interesting new uses that would contribute to the vitality of our economy. And cities are living organisms, and ours has an autoimmune disorder. <laughs> when, we, when we senselessly, systematically tear down reusable buildings, we uh, decouple the link to our past, we devalue our present, and most critically, we deprive our future of potential prosperity. And that's not ours to take. That belongs to our children and to their children and to all the people that we talk about wanting to attract in our quest to become America's creative crossroads. How bad do we want that, by the way? Is it bad enough to change the narrative of demolition by default? Or do we honestly think that we can attract the best and the brightest by offering cheap, abundant parking? When, <laughs> when you, thank you, when you, when you don't have Denver's mountains or California's climate, what you have is what you build, and it has to be pretty special to keep people happy and staying put in an age of unprecedented mobility. So this isn't a talk about nostalgia. This is Business 101. If we want to be a tech and creative epicenter, we have to have supply, we have to be in demand. And that means buildings and arrangements of space that people and companies want to inhabit. Artists and startups thrive in old reused buildings. I don't know anyone who thrives in a parking garage. This building is this now. And I love that the truck says, stay back 50 feet, because that's precisely what the building says. <laughs> and this Burnham and Root jewel that stood at the north end of what's now the Central Business District would be internationally celebrated as an architectural example of the style if we left it standing. That's what we did with it. This is 1930s Kansas City, right before the destruction began. What do you see? I I'll tell you what you don't see. You don't see a single parking lot versus today the same area from the opposite angle, that's called a parking crater. Is that worth caring about? So this is also not a talk about what we call preservation, even though that's vital. This talk is about adaptive reuse. This is about reimagining the purpose of a building, taking advantage of its embodied energy and its material resources and the craftsmanship and the love that went into making it. Demolition by default continues to this day. This is uh, the Orion Pictures building uh, right down the street. It could contribute so much to the growing, burgeoning Crossroads neighborhood. Picture it as a gastropub, having a nice lunch there. Uh, the doors open, cafe-style seating spilling out onto the sidewalk. Amazing, right? Well, too bad, because it's now a parking garage. It's across from four surface lots and a 900-space public parking garage that we as a city paid $40 million to build. And this disorder spreads. This is one block from that new garage uh, a few months ago. The unremarkable little building could have housed a 15-person startup. It could have uh, had a a uh, multi-million dollar impact on the neighborhood over the years. It could have contributed hundreds of thousands of dollars to the city in revenue, uh, but instead it created four new parking spaces. 
And it's going on to this day. This is uh, the once magnificent building uh, that stood at the corner of, that stands at the corner of 10th and Grand. In a recent public meeting, a prominent Kansas City business leader, who I think is in this audience, uh, said that it has no future and that it would be better off as a parking lot. Please change your mind. I don't think that that will help us become the city that we're aiming to become. Uh, but there is good news and there is hope because this problem that we have is cultural. It's not genetic. It's not hardwired into the DNA of our city. It's learned behavior. We learn this from our past. We have a history of doing this and we can stop doing it. We, the people in this room, and we can start by recognizing that parking is an unimaginative, permanent solution to a temporary problem, uh, one that may not even exist in the near future. So we, in this room, can change the narrative about what drives our city. Thank you.